OMG, welcome back to my channel. So excited that you are here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate you. It's Jody Dunn. I'm coming at you with a Finance Friday video. OMG, I'm switching things up a little bit this year and I'm going to tell you why. I have my eye on Clark. Hussey, hang on, let me get a shot for you because I don't know if <laughs> Oh, he's getting so dang big. Look at Clark. Oh my goodness. My fluffy boy. He's getting a haircut next week, but I almost don't want to cut his hair because he's just so cute and fluffy. But you've got to maintain the long haired braids. I don't want him getting matted or anything like that. So anyways, if you are new, and you just found me, I am so excited that you are here. Would you please say hello to me and let me know that you are new right down there. I would love to welcome you to the channel and say hello back to you. And if you are already subscribed, thank you so much for coming back to another video. I appreciate you. Uh, so I'm switching things up a little bit this year. I talked about this during my video a couple weeks ago. Um, when I counted my 2022 savings challenges that I had found a YouTuber, um, YouTube, you know, will randomly recommend videos to you. And I fell in love with her. And I talked about her in that video, Amelia Budgets. I'll leave her channel linked down below. Um, and she just has such a simple way of tracking her expenses that I fell in love and I binged so many of her videos. I just really enjoy them. You know how you just find somebody and you're like, oh, I really enjoy their content and you watch a lot of their content. So that's how she was for me. I have been doing cash stuffing videos for, it's been two years now since I found the budget mom, uh, December of 2020, I think it was, um, or was it? Yeah, I don't remember. Anyways, I've been doing cash stuffing videos for about two months now. Two months, two years. And I love sharing that. And here's the reality. Cash stuffing videos, those are the sexy videos. Those are the exciting videos to watch. People just like watching cash stuffing videos. Budgeting videos are not really <laughs> very sexy. They're not exciting. However, I kind of feel like I did my my journey of switching my finances around and getting better with my finances backwards where I should have been more tracking what I was spending better and budgeting better versus just doing the cash stuffing. And I won't say I was just doing the cash stuffing, but I still struggle with tracking what I'm spending. And so I decided to kind of adopt what Amelia is doing and I wanted to share that with you. Now, I've never really shared like, I've shared a lot, but I've never really shared like my whole budget, my income, our bills, things like that. And honestly, I'm, Clark, I'm just sorry, watching Clark. Honestly, I'm, I don't think I'm going to fully share everything. Um, whatever I do share, I share in hopes that it will help somebody and I share it to help hold me accountable. Y'all are already aware <laughs> the internet is a, a place where people like to come and be very judgy <laughs> and people like to offer their opinions. Um, and honestly, I do not take financial advice from people on the internet. And honestly, I don't even take financial advice from really anybody in my life. If you are not doing so much better than me financially, I'm talking a hundred times better than me, then I'm probably not interested in hearing how you think I should do my finances, right? It's like talking to a person that's been divorced twice and they're trying to give you relationship advice and you're thinking to yourself, what? <laughs> You've been divorced twice and you're trying to tell me how to make my relationship better? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. So, although this may seem 
like I'm giving you advice. I'm absolutely not. Do not take financial advice from me or anybody else that you are not comfortable with taking financial advice from. Finances are so incredibly personalized. And this kind of leads me to my, my second point of why I've really never shared like full budgeting and all of, all of my financials on the internet. People are so very, very closed minded um, when it comes to, well, pretty much a lot of things. But let me give you an example. I watched a budgeting video. Uh, yesterday, I think it was, and I was reading through the comments and somebody left a comment that said, finally, somebody that has a super close income to me that I can follow. And I was like, oh my heavens, we need to stop looking and searching for somebody that we relate to 100% because that's not serving us. Here's the reality. I do not, like almost in any shape or form, relate to Amelia and her life. She is in a totally different season of life than I am. She is much younger than me. She works a corporate job where she gets a set salary. I do not. I am self-employed and my income fluctuates. It is extremely variable. She rents um, an apartment, I think. I do not. I own a home. Her income is very different from mine. Her expenses are very different from mine. She doesn't have children. She's not married. I've been married for 27 years. I have three children. I have two grandchildren. I don't relate to her life at all, but I got value from her video. I got value, a ton of value from her videos and the content she puts out because I am elastic enough that I can say, okay, wait a second, Jody. although everything may be different for you than what it is for her, can you take the concept of what she's doing and apply it to your situation to help you? And of course I can. So, those are just a couple of reasons why I've really never shared like my full budgeting journey and journey to, you know, pay off debt. I've shared a lot. I've talked about the credit card debt. I shared with you every single month of progress I was making. I shared with you when I paid off credit cards. Um, you know, I've shared the cash stuffing videos, which literally has changed so much for me to be so much more prepared for expenses and things like that. But the one thing that I still struggle with because I don't put focus on it is tracking my expenses. And I think that there are areas that I could probably cut back some, but you can't cut back when you don't even know exactly what you're spending. I log every transaction that happens in our account, but I don't, um, I don't categorize it. I don't go through and go, okay, how much did we spend on groceries last, last month? How much did we spend on pet food last month? Like, I don't do any of that. So that's a change I'm going to be making for 2023, thanks to the inspiration I got from Amelia. So I'm going to kind of take you along this journey with me. Of course, I'm still going to be doing cash stuffing um, videos as well. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the binder I got and basically how I'm keeping track of my expenses just to get a better handle on them. And um, I'm just going to kind of, for accountability, go through my spending for the last two weeks. So I hope this inspires you to maybe track your spending. If you're not able to do sinking funds at this point because you don't have the extra disposable income to do so, this is a great place to start. Again, not giving out financial advice and you should not take financial advice from me or anybody else that is not doing far better than you financially. I'm just sharing with you what I'm doing and what I feel has helped me. Maybe it won't help you, but maybe it will. So, all right, we're gonna head to the kitchen table and we're gonna go over some numbers. If you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you so much.
let's go. All right, we are at, oh, the kitchen table. Here's just another reason why. I can't figure out how these budgeting video people <laughs> film their videos. I literally have the tripod sitting, it's right here. It's right here in front of me. So I'm sitting behind the tripod so you can see <laughs> my stuff. And it's not like really comfortable. I, I must be doing something wrong. Anyways, I ordered this off of Amazon. Um, it is a, a bullet journal. So, you know, a bullet journal just has, well, you can't, can you even see that? It has the little dots. So, um, I guess bullet journals are very popular. I've never used one before, but this bullet journal came in different colors. I picked green because green's my favorite color. Uh, it came with like some washi tape that you can use. It came with a whole set of like fine tip markers. Um, it came with some stencils if you want to do some fancy art in it, some stickers. Uh, and so that's what I ordered. I think it was $18. You can probably go get a super cheap bullet journal from any store. You could probably get it under $5. Uh, but I just ordered mine off Amazon. So I wanted all the fancy stuff with it. I'll link it. Oh, see, I just kicked the, I kicked the tripod. I'll link it down in the description box if you want to take a look at it. But basically what I did was I just kind of copied what Amelia did. And I will link her video down in the description box where she walks through how she set up her bullet journal. And so I just copied that for now. And I'm going to see how it works for me or what changes I need to make to it or things like that. There was a couple of tweaking that I did um, to some things. So I want to show you so my, again, everybody's finances are going to be very personalized. So yours are probably not going to be the same as mine. Um, I set up, uh, this is how I decided to do it. Basically, we get paid once a month. So when the paycheck hits, that's going to start my financial month, if that makes sense. So for the second month of the year, it's going to run from January 19th for me to February 15th. And this is like four weeks. So you may want to do yours January 1 to, G to January 31st. I'm doing it for the pay periods I have. So the first sheet of my bullet budget, budget bullet journal uh, is my calendar to let me know like when we get paid. And then I did basically a, a budget. So I've got income up here. I've got our expenses, our variable expenses, and then adding everything up. And I don't know what our income is because it's extremely variable. The next page that Amelia did, which I haven't filled in yet because I have to still think on this on what I want to do. But she had a page basically of her debt overview and I think she listed them according to what was her priority debt that she was trying to pay off. And I do have some debts that I want to pay off. I think I'm going to, I think 2023 is maybe the year I get rid of having a car payment. So we'll see. Um, and then the next one is sinking funds. So I can keep track of what I have in my sinking funds at all times. And then there's my weekly check-in. So this is what I'm going to be sharing with you. My weekly check-in, I don't know that I'll bring you a video every week, and my transaction log so that I can stay on top of the things I want to stay on top of. For instance, grocery spending, dining out, what I'm spending on pet food, our gas expenses, miscellaneous, and other. So these are the categories I'm trying to kind of figure out exactly what we're spending and then where I can potentially cut some spending if need be. I set budgets. Like I said, I set budgets for all categories every month, but I don't pay attention to was I over in my grocery spending, but under in my gas budget. I just don't pay attention to that. And I want to start being more intentional with my spending. And so 
That's why I'm doing this. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my first two weeks of spending and then do check-ins for what I had budgeted for. So this is my transaction log and this is going to go, my month right now goes from 1221 to January 18th, I think, according to our pay dates. So week one, so I have set goals for each one of these categories, again, in groceries, dining out, pet, gas, miscellaneous, and other. And when I set the goals, I did not set the goal of what I wanted to spend. I kind of set the goal on what I think we are spending. So that way I can get a handle on what I can cut and, and that type of thing. Hopefully that makes sense. So I am going to share with you my goals for these categories. And again, they may not be your goals. You may not agree with these goals. It doesn't matter. They're just my personal goals at this point to try to get a handle and be more intentional with my spending. So grocery, we are a family of four. I set our grocery budget at $200 a week. And I post these videos on my couponing channel because I feel like it fits in well with trying to save money. And the one thing that I love about couponing is that I can get so many of our household needs covered through couponing that we don't have to have a super strict grocery budget. Although I really don't know if we're sticking to $200 a week because I don't track it. I know there are months where we just spend way too much money on dining out. And as far as having a family of four, like even to go to McDonald's is not cheap. So anyways, let's start going through these. So we're going to we're going to do week 1 right now. Uh I took the girls to Speedway on 1221 and we got Slurpees. I put that in the grocery category. Maybe I should have put that in dining out. It doesn't matter. This might have been the last day of school or something. I can't remember. Um, there was a gas purchase and I always put whether it was made by me or my husband and I always know whether it was made by me or my husband because he makes sure to round his to even numbers and I don't give a crap. When the gas is done being filled, I let it go. <laughs> I don't round it. Um, we had a miss or I put this under other. I wanted to track this on here, but this was a Home Depot purchase for some stuff for the house. So I'll actually pull that money out of my sinking fund that I have for household expenses. Uh, there was another miscellaneous expense that my husband did at Rite Aid for $7.56. Dining out, this was a McDonald's purchase of me. Uh, McDonald's brought their dang breakfast bagels back. <laughs> They're my favorite. They haven't had them. And like, I don't even know, uh, almost two years. So you're going to see a lot of gosh dang McDonald's purchases for the dang breakfast bagels by me. It is what it is. Uh, another fuel purchase by my husband. Um, a miscellaneous purchase for $31.01. We got pizza one night. That was $39.75. Um, and then... A McDonald's purchase for eight oh five. I'm guessing my husband must have stopped at McDonald's for lunch one day. So that was our spending from week one, which was twelve twenty one to twelve twenty seven. So I'm going to move over into my weekly check in, and what I did was I added everything up in the grocery category. So for this budget period, I have a budget of eight hundred dollars. I spent a hundred and forty five dollars and fifty nine cents in groceries. So out of my $800, I have $654.41 left. Then in dining out, we spend $132.37. My budget for dining out is $500 a month, which I'm going to go over. Oh my gosh. Wait till you see the next week. Um, my balance now left in our budget for dining out is $367.63. I didn't spend anything on pets. My budget is $150 a month, and this would just be for their pet food. I have a sinking fund for like um, vet visits and things like that. Gas, we spent $94.16, and I have a budget of $250 a month, so we have $155.84 left. Miscellaneous purchases was $38.57. 
So we have 360, 143 left. And then I had that other expense. Again, I don't have a budget for that, but I wanted to track it on here because I'll just take it from my sinking funds. All right, let's flip back over to transactions and let's look at our, oh, I never even finished. I saw that line. I didn't even finish. So that those numbers might not even make sense. Oh, heavens. No, let's not do that. Uh, had another gas purchase right there. That's mine, 3716. <laughs> I don't care if it has cents on it. Another dining out. That was by me getting a dang bagel. Uh, a dining out for, um, we got takeout one night from a local restaurant. That was $70 takeout. Like restaurants are just expensive, especially when you have a family of four. Grocery purchase for $128.21, and then another grocery purchase for $12.32. And this was a little bit more challenging for me because some of these were like actual Christmas expenses because I was hosting Christmas and Christmas Eve. So I really, I know this purchase right here of $12.32. I got some cheese balls at a little market in town. Um... That was definitely a Christmas purchase and not something I'll purchase all the time. I don't know how much of this one twenty eight twenty one was groceries for our family or stuff that I needed for Christmas. So anyways, so now these are all of the numbers that make up all of these numbers. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, now we're going to move on to week two and it was a really high spending week especially for dining out. My girls were out of school. Um, we did a couple of different things with them. We got some food from one of their favorite restaurants, which is very expensive. So anyways, let's just go through it. My husband got a car wash for $9. Uh, that's gonna come out of my car maintenance fund. We had a dining out purchase at McDonald's for $16. I'm guessing maybe I got breakfast one day. Uh, we had a dining out purchase for dinner that same day which was dang $54.33 and my husband left a $16 tip. <laughs> he picked it up. I was like, holy crap. It was around Christmas time. We actually had a couple of extra dining out purchases this week because Grayson had lost, uh, her furnace stopped working and she came and actually stayed with us. And so... It was even more expensive. I'm not asking her to pay for food. She's my daughter. Uh, so not only were we getting food for us four, but then I also ordered food for EJ and I ordered food for Grayson. Edward was um, working at the time when we got this dinner. So it's totally fine. It just is what it is. My husband must have stopped at Subway for lunch one day. He spent eight eleven. I had a gas purchase of $35.21. Um, I had a miscellaneous purchase here of $28.62. We did another dining out day for $55.35. Uh, another McDonald's day. I'm guessing this was breakfast for the whole family and I probably wanted to get a bagel. Uh, a grocery purchase of $56.95. This is where I took my girls to their favorite Mexican restaurant and yes, it was 80 dang dollars. We ended up getting dessert, food for four of us. Uh, we got extra stuff to bring home because they have like the best chips and salsa and my girls love their rice. So anyways, it was Christmas break and I knew I wanted to take them, so I did. Uh, here's my dang bagel. Uh, dining out for $32.50 $32 at Burger King. A miscellaneous purchase of $17.58. That was by my husband. And another miscellaneous purchase of $47.98. So this was week two spending. Let's move over to the check-in. So in groceries, I only spent $56.95. Why? Because we dined out so much. So I still have $597.46 in my grocery budget. For dining out, OMG, we spent $291.92 in one week of dining out. Again, I had extra expenses because I was buying food for Grayson and EJ, but it was also Christmas break and I knew our expenses were going to be super high. I think I budgeted $125 per week for dining out right now just to see if that's kind of what we stick to. We spent a lot. I only have $75.71 left in dining out. And we have two full more weeks. 
we're definitely going over that budget. Didn't spend anything on pet food. Um, gas only spent $35.21. So I still have $120.63 left in what I budgeted. Miscellaneous, um, $94.18. So I still have $267 for the next two weeks on what I budgeted. And then that other expensive $9 that I will take out of my car maintenance budget and put back into my bank account. So, so far, way over budget on dining out. And this is exactly why I wanted to start keeping better track of what I was spending so I could see what, what areas I make the decision that I want to work on. Maybe I decide to raise my dining out budget during the holidays when I know I'm going to be spending extra or during times when my girls are off school that I know I want to treat them to their favorite restaurant or whatever it may be. Um, but this will be really key for us, I feel like, in the next couple of weeks when things are kind of back to normal. I want to see what... I'm not really, at this point, I'm not trying to change anything. I'm trying to see where our spending actually is lying and if it's in line with what I want our budget to be. Um, and then I can say, okay, where can we make some cutbacks and things like that. So that is my weekly check-in for the first two weeks, um, which ran through December 21st through January 3rd. And I probably will come back in two more weeks to show you where we're spending um, and if I stayed on budget, basically, of what I set or which categories I went over budget, which categories I went under budget, and then make the decision for January. Well, it'll be the middle of January through the middle of February for me on if I want to change any budget. So there you go. Hopefully this helped in some way, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you so much. I'm going to see you again soon. Bye.